five, four, three, two, one. This is Lights, Camera, Super, Action. She is Claudia, and I am His Victor. And we, no, we are not here to, to watch Shazam. It's not. Shazam. He hasn't even started yet. No, so. it comes out in <laughs> March, I think. Yeah. No, we are here to watch Ant-Man and, and the, the Wasp, Wasp Quantum Mania. Uh, why? Because we love comics and, and we, we love, love films. films. What are your expectations for this movie? I want to know how this micro world develops, you know, um, with the interaction of Ant-Man, the Wasp, their daughter, and uh, against Kang the Conqueror. Who's playing, who's playing Kang the Conqueror? Jonathan Mayer's excellent actor. Yeah, he, he's great. And he's scheduled to to be also to be also in Creed Three. Yes, which is one of my. Favorites? Your most anticipated movies mm -hmm. for 2023. That video is coming soon. <laughs> so, what are your expectations? Well, I'm intrigued. I love the cast. I love Paul Rudd. I love uh, I love uh, Michael Douglas. I want to see what Michelle Pfeiffer does with more screen time. Uh, I like uh, Evangeline Lilly. I'm going to miss Luis. Yeah, me too. Michael Peña, who is amazing. And I, I'm sad that he's not here, um, but I've been on the record saying that I'm not a, the biggest fan of CGI suits, like I call it. Uh, films that are dominated by, by uh, uh, visual effects. The story has to be strong. The and, script? And the, yeah, the script has to be strong, and the development of the characters has to be equally strong for me to get on board with this type of movie. Yeah. But, um, and I'm not so sure that director Peyton Reed, who is a pretty good director, but I'm not so sure that he's ready for this epic type of movie. So I'm intrigued, I want to see, uh, I don't know how, how long this movie is. I don't know how long is this movie, but I just want to see this micro world with the micro notes and the micro everything. <laughs> Where, I don't know if the micro notes are there, but... And the micro ants, if they're uh, micro ants. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's go see Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantum, Quantum Mania. Mania. See you in, I don't know, soon. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye. The movie lasts two hours and five minutes, and, but at the end of the movie, uh, we couldn't uh, film our reaction. Uh, there was uh, some situations that we couldn't uh, overcome, so we had to wait till we got here at home. We're going to give you our honest opinion here in the in the warmth of our home. Yes. <laughs> Well, the friendly confines. <laughs> well, what can I say? Yeah, what's your reaction um, regarding Ant Man and the Wasp? Quantum Mania. Well, uh, of the, <coughs> of the three movies of Ant Man, this is the one I like the best. It doesn't have too much comedy, it has a little comedy sprinkles sprinkles you know over. yeah just little details you know but i liked it very much mm -hmm. um is jam-packed with action adventure war a lot of um great actors i mean michelle pfeiffer um michael douglas paul rod evangeline lily Catherine. Catherine Newton. Catherine Newton. The newcomer, Catherine Newton, who plays Cassie. Yeah. She did really good. 
I mean, Jonathan Majors, he he stole the show pretty, pretty good. Um, but they all made, they, they were all fantastic. I mean, uh, I like the scenes. I like the script, screenplay. Um, and I even like the, what we, well, we know they are the Micronauts, but they cannot mention that they are Micronauts because of copyright issues. Um, mm -hmm. And it was jam-packed with action. It was great. I love the CGI. It's, it is loaded with CGI, but yeah, I like the, the way it was developed. Um, it didn't seem fake at all. Um, I really like it. I really like it very, very much. And what do you think about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? Well, at first I had my doubts regarding uh, the director's ability to go epic because he had excelled doing small small movies, palate cleansers as he called them. But um, I really appreciated the way he directed the actors. The performances were, were pretty good. I especially liked the, the, the dialogue between Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Jonathan Majors. Two great uh, heavyweights in terms of acting. And uh, Paul Rudd was charming as always, and Michael Douglas was awesome. Catherine Newton was a pleasant surprise. I like, uh, I like her a lot. But um, I, I gotta agree with you, jo Jonathan Majors stole the show. Kang the Conqueror was, he yes. was menacing, he was terrifying, he was... Uh, a mother... He, yeah, that too. But Michelle Pfeiffer was a badass too, because she played something a little bit different than what we expected. She was like a freedom fighter who used to fight with the with a with an army of uh of uh micro people can we call them that yeah micro people yeah the family dynamic was very close to the fantastic four because it's a five instead of four it's a five person uh, family unit uh hank janet hope uh cassie cassie and uh, and uh, Paul Rudd, uh, Scott, Scott, Scott Lang, uh, so Jesus <laughs> Christ. Okay, and that works. That works great. The CGI, it's a CGI soup. The Quantum Realm is a CGI soup, but it's a well cooked CGI soup. But it's not top notch MCU. There's too much going on. There are too too much creativity without control. So, yes, Peyton Reed could do an epic, but it's not a great epic. It's a good movie of an of a of an epic nature. So, there was one thing that I didn't like at all, and that was well, Modoc. Modoc works when he has a, a face mask, but when he removes it, it's awful. It's it just, looks like a CGI. It's just, it's just like a mashed up. It looks like an oil orange. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a match up. It's Corey Stahl's face mashed up a little bit. It, to me, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But uh, maybe some people like it. I didn't, but but uh, besides that, the movie's pretty good. It's, it's a good. It's not top tier uh, MCU, but it's a it's pretty good. It's mid tier pretty much. So I think you should go watch *A Man and the Wasp*, uh, *Quantumania*. What do you think? It uh, the movie reminds me of a few movies like *Thor Ragnarok*. It reminds me of *Star Wars* movies. It reminds me a lot of *Star Dune. Wars*. And Dune is re reminds me of Dune. But when I said yeah. that there are too many ideas, there are too many alien beings that it's hard to tell what's going on. And it's like Peyton Reed took episode Star Wars episode one, two, and three, and he mashed them together. And it's like too much going on, too many alien races. It's really 
Yes, I, I, it's. I'm. I'm sure that was a turn off for a lot of film critics. I like it. I'm sure you do as well. I, I liked it because very much. we are used to that world, to worlds of imagination. But I'm sure that <laughs> that was a big turn off for film critics. Well, I I will recommend it very much. Yeah, I did you like it. I did watch. like it. So it's, it's a fun. So movie. go see it. It's really really fun. Yeah, and and it's. In terms of the growth of, of Scott, it makes sense because this is Scott after Civil War, after facing Thanos in Endgame, so he's ready to face a big bad, like, I mean, he's a common man, he's a guy in a suit, but he's a hero, and he's ready to face a major baddie like Kang the Conqueror. Oh, by the way, if, I don't know if I said it already. But uh, there are two scenes, post credit scenes, and both of them are very important. Yes, so stay. very important. So please stay. I know your bladder will be <laughs> crying. Mine was. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but, but stay. You, you, it's, it will be worth it. It will be worth it. It will be worth it. So this was... Lights. Camera. Super. Action. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.